From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Six women were charged yesterday with child cruelty in connection with the beating of a number of wards at the Children's Emergency Hostel. Last month, a surveillance video showing children being beaten in a care home went viral on social media. After the footage became public, a number of employees were relieved of their duties pending the outcome of a police investigation. Yesterday, Eloise Cantor, 52, Carmita Woods, 47, Natasha Pratt, 46, Oconel Gordon, 25, Sabrina Smith, 61, and Sean Seymour, 42, appeared before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt, charged with 11 counts of cruelty to children. The prosecution said the former staff members unlawfully physically abused nine boys and two girls in a way that caused them unnecessary suffering on September 22, 2020. Seymour is accused of failing to report the abuse of the minors, who all range from ages 7 to 11, to the appropriate officials on the day in question. During the hearing, all of the women denied the allegations and the matter was adjourned for a four-day trial beginning on November 2nd. The government is being threatened with the ejection from the North Eleuthera Airport and other assets unless it pays almost $26 million in compensation for their use over a six-decade period. Attorneys representing 3,000 common land owners warned that their clients will initiate legal action over the government's alleged violation of their constitutional and property rights in taking their land without paying a single cent. In a move that threatens to dispute the $65 million North Eleuthera Airport expansion, the Harbor Island Con- Commonage Committee wants reimbursement, not only for land that the present facility has occupied since 1959, but also the 450-acre and 30-acre sections that were taken for well fields and the district dump in the mid-1990s. The Free National Movement ratified five candidates for the next general election last night, including former Health Minister and Elizabeth MP Dr. Dwayne Sands. Other ratified candidates included North Andrus and the Barry Islands MP Carlton Boleg, State Minister for Finance Kwesi Thompson in East Grand Bahama, who were both incumbents, and newcomers Vandia Stewart in Central and South Abaco and Courtney Colibale in Centerville. This FNM has now ratified 30 candidates for the next election. The remaining nine candidates are expected to be ratified next week. A man was found shot dead yesterday morning with apparent gunshot injuries. He's the fifth person to be murdered since Sunday. Police press liaison officer assistant superintendent Audley Peters told reporters at the scene that the victim, who was shot several times about the body, is believed to be in his late 20s. He said the deceased lived in the immediate area of the crime scene. Anyone with information is asked to contact their nearest police station. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Saudi Arabia's crown prince likely approves the killing of U.S.-based journalist Jamal Khashoggi inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, according to a newly declassified U.S. intelligence report released today. The finding could escalate pressure on the Biden administration to hold the kingdom accountable for a murder that drew widespread outrage in the U.S. and abroad. The public blaming of crown prince Mohammed bin Salman amounted to an extraordinary rebuke and was likely to set the tone for the new administration's relationship with a country President Joe Biden has criticized, but which the White House also regards in some contexts as a strategic partner. Lawyers representing jailed Ethiopian opposition politicians say they are concerned for the lives of their clients, whose hunger strike has gone on for nearly a month and drawn international attention as they protest their treatment by government. Four of them have continued with their hunger strike, and their health is deteriorating quickly. The jailed politicians include media mogul-turned-politician Jawar Mohammed, Bekel Jerba, Hamza Adain, and Dejane Taffa. They were arrested in 2020, with at least 16 others following the killing of a renowned singer. The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure will dominate weather conditions across the majority of the area, while a weak surface trough over the extreme northwest Bahamas sparks some increased shower activity through tonight. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents along eastern shorelines. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy and warm, with isolated showers mainly across the extreme northwest Bahamas through tonight. Winds east to southeast 
southeast at 15 knots. Seas 3 to 5 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny, warm and breezy, with a few light passing showers this afternoon, becoming mostly fair and breezy, with a stray shower or two possible tonight. A small craft's caution is in effect. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots, but gusty at times. Seas 4 to 7 feet over the ocean, but higher in gusts. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 85 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 72. The sun will set this afternoon at 609 and will rise tomorrow morning at 634. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.